Hey guys, Shiri here playing more Aviary Attorney, and I have decided that we're gonna go confront Juan Querido, why he's actually not the Prince of Spain. I think that that is very important information for us to have if we are gonna defend him. Anyway, you again. Visiting hours are over. Come back later. Wait, really? I have no time for your quibbling, monsieur. Stand aside. You can talk to me like that. I most certainly can. I have reason to believe that you're housing a suspect under false pretenses. That is in, in indirect violation to the status of whatever. Failure to comply with our request may result in you, yes, you, monsieur, being held directly responsible for any consequential legal action. Alright, alright, no need to break out the legal list on me. I'll go open the cell. So... How did you memorize those criminal codes? Yeah, I didn't. Memorize? Come on, Sparrowson. Learn how to bluff. Damn. Ah, oh, Senor Falcon. It is so good to see you again. You have some good news about my case, I hope. Do I? <coughs> Confront. Angrily. Drop the act one. You fed me a string of lights of lies. And I don't appreciate wasting my time. You appear upset, senor. Of course I'm upset. You hired me to defend you and then you made every effort to sabotage your own case. Tell me, what's your real name? Why, senor? It is Juan Querido, of course. If you want your trial to be a farce, then you don't need my help. Come on, Sparrowson, we are leaving. Wait, 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 wait. Calm yourself, Monsieur Falcon. I'll reveal all. Did you just say, Monsieur? What happened to your Spanish accent? Your suspicions are well placed. Juan Querido is not my real name, and I'm not a Spanish prince. That was just a persona I concocted for the purpose of getting arrested. Really? So, what's your real name? What's in a name? It's just an empty label, a vapid reflection of who we really are. Today I'm Juan Querido, Prince of Spain. Tomorrow I may be Bruno Reyer, a pauper living under a bridge of the Seine. But that doesn't change who I am or what I do. That didn't really answer my question. No, I suppose it didn't. But you're a smart bird. I su suspect that you already know my real name. Uh, do I have it in the card? You are Renard Volpes, private investigator. Very astute. And you are Monsieur Falcon, private defense attorney. But that wasn't always your name, was it? Just like me, you know how to adopt a new persona on a whim. You changed your name, Falcon? I didn't know that. This isn't about me, Juan. Renard, Monsieur, we're trying to uncover the truth here. Of course, of course. But what truth is it that you are attempting to uncover, Monsieur Falcon? Uh... What would you... Why would you like to get arrested? But why? Uh... You are putting me in a difficult position, monsieur. If I tell you the full story, I will be putting someone else in danger. How about this? I'll let you... I'll tell you a story. I like stories. There was a girl. A mademoiselle who was... Oh, sorry. He, he kind of stopped his Spanish accent, right? A mademoiselle who was in a great deal of debt. Everyone has a debt these days, monsieur. Indeed. But this particular mademoiselle was indebted to a very powerful man, and that man wished to collect. The mademoiselle had no means of paying, so the man offered her a deal. Murder this man, and I will forget what you owe. Refuse, and I will reap what I am owed from your parents. With no alternative option, the mademoiselle accepted. But another man, a gallant knight with foolish, archaic notions of chivalry, heard the mademoiselle's story. The knight knew that murder was inevitable, but he was a way to take the fall. Ooh. Do you understand what I'm saying, monsieur? I understand. 
to be honest, it wasn't the subtlest of allegories. No, it, it was not an allegory at all, it's just what happened. <laughs> uh, storytelling was never my strong suit. But I'm glad that you're seeing things from my perspective. Hopefully that sheds some light on the situation. If I may ask, monsieur, why did you not just go to the police with the information you had? The police are not always an option. What is a man to do? Well, the justice system itself is the problem. Ooh, wait. Maybe the judge is the man who was owed the debt and wants to kill the king or whatever. I'll let you know when I figure it out, monsieur. <laughs> Dwell on it. Perhaps we should talk about something else in the meantime. That's all. I don't have any more questions. I think we've learned all we can from you. Really? I don't feel we've learned that, that very much. Oh, Monsieur Falcon, before I forget. Could you find Mousy and ask him whether the birds have successfully flown south for the winter? Oh, damn. Okay, so we're talking in code now. Whether the birds have flown south? What is that? Some sort of code? Something like that. But rest assured, monsieur, that this does directly pertain to the case. Well, if we have time, I'll be sure to let Mousy know. Let's make a move, Sparrowson. Right. So, I'm assuming that Mousy is in the... How many time... How much time do I have left? As occasional special cinematic scenes marked by the exclamation mark will pop up in the map screen. These cinematic scenes are only available for one day before disappearing, but they take no time to visit. Oh. Their viewing is entirely optional. Yes. Okay, where are they? I don't see them. Hmm. Oh, here. Let me see it. Oh, cinematic. A storm is brewing, my brother. Word of the royal assassination attempt has spread. The proletariats grow confident, the bourgeois are cowering. It won't be long before we have rioting. And then, a revolution. Damn. Alright guys, so... We could... Go talk to Mousy. But I don't care much. Uh, let's do chocolate after this one actually chocolate is more important so that one welcome welcome to the lander hagelslack chocolate emporium the finest belgian chocolate shop in all of paris i am lander hagelslack the founder and owner of this establishment and i am jj falcon defense attorney good day monsieur Oh, lawyers, very fancy. I must say that once I dreamed of being a lawyer, but well, circumstances wouldn't allow it. It's a funny story, you see. When I was a young boy, I befriended the son of a Hungarian attorney. Falcon, you have to help me. Wait, what? What is it? It's the smell, Falcon. It's overpowering me. It's demanding that I lay waste to the shop. Ah, oh, for pity's sake, restrain yourself, Sparrowson. Oh, but I'm rambling, aren't I? So, are you monsieur here to buy some chocolate? Yes! Says Sparrowson. No, 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 no. We are actually here on business, monsieur. Business? First thing first. We believe that this chocolate wrapper originated from your shop. Are we correct? Oh, yes, yes. That is indeed a trademark Hagelslack wrapper for genuine Belgian Hagelslack chocolate. This was almost certainly bought from this establishment. Very good. With that established, there is something else we wish to ask Monsieur Hagerslack. We bought... Who bought this piece of chocolate? It's kinda difficult to know, but... 
I am afraid not, messieurs. Not just because of matters of confidentiality, although that is a factor, you understand. But because I wouldn't possibly know that. I thought elephants never forget. My memory is impeccable, monsieur, but you must understand that I have dozens of customers a day. There are hundreds of people who would have potentially bought this particular item. Hmm. So your memory is good, but you need further information. If we were to give you the description and name of a person, would you be able to tell us whether they purchased something from you? Oh, yes, yes, yes. I could probably do that, sir. Let me think. Who to ask about? Hmm. Hmm, so many people. How about Severin Kokoriko? Have you ever served a cockerel with ludicrous good posture named Severin Kokoriko? No, monsieur. Let me think. Hmm. Ooh, 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 ooh. I'm missing people here. Oh, a lot. How about... Not a librarian. Hmm. Not these guys. Hmm. This guy, maybe. Porcupine art aficionado named Eric Pork. No, monsieur. Hmm. Mouse. Nope. Might terrify me, yes, of course. Monsieur, I am growing tired of these endless inquiries. Perhaps you may should come back another day. <gasps> you know, Falcon, it's possible that we just haven't encountered the chocolate fiend yet. Rather than coming here every day and making aimless guesses, we should wait until we have someone specific in mind. You might have a point, Sparrowson. Thank you for your time. Anytime, messieurs. God damn it. I wasted a day, guys. I think that I have only one day left. God damn it. Okay, this one. That's my last day, right? The pair arrive at Les Halles Market. Vendors and buskers, performers and thieves, bourgeois and peasants all bustle from place to place. Prince Juan said that he met a flower girl here. Senya, I think he said her name was. There's a swan with flowers over there. Do you think it does her? I think so. It's possible that she knows the murderer, or even th that she is the murderer herself. Excuse me! Mademoiselle Thermal Lady! Would you like a word? Tact, Sparrowson. Tact. We've been over this. Good day, messieurs. Are you interested in purchasing a flower? Yes, I wish to purchase a rose from a lady. I am afraid that I'm out of roses. I saw my last one a week ago. Perhaps you would be satisfied with a chrysanthemum instead. It is a beautiful flower from a fair maiden. Please, don't mind Sparrowson. He fell out of his nest as a baby and has said dumb things ever since. Hey, let me introduce myself. I am JJ Falcon, defense attorney, and you are Mademoiselle... Signa? That's right, Catherine Marie Signa. I suppose you're here to ask about the royal assassination attempt. How do you know? I'm not fool, sir. I know what a rose I saw was used as the murder weapon. To be honest, I'm surprised it's taken so long for somebody to directly question me. The Parisian police seem to have a habit of missing obvious leads, so do you mind if I ask you a couple of questions? Business is slow, please ask away. Who bought your last rose? The person who bought the rose, I didn't catch his name, but he was a charming red fox. Sounds like our Juan. I met him around a week ago on the 6th. We talked for a little while about the usual things, you know, like every how everyone seems to be in debt these days. Then he bought a rose and left. I hear the fox is on trial, but to be honest, monsieur, I don't think he's guilty. Oh? Why is that? Well, actually, never mind. It's just a gut feeling. Pressure her. Tell me, why? Mademoiselle, 
it just so happens that we are defending this particular fox in our... In the court of uh, seas, whatever. If you have something to say that could prove his innocence, now would be the time to let us know. Mm. I'm sorry, messieurs. I can't. No, I shouldn't have pressured her. No, mademoiselle, wait, wait up. Damn. Nice display of tact and finesse, Falcon. You scared her off. The swan obviously knows something crucial about the case. We need to get to the bottom of whatever it is. Agreed, but I don't think she'll be in the mood to tell us anything else. I know, why don't we try acting like a little more tact and finesse next time? Got that. Okay guys, one more day. Tact and finesse. Oh no, wait. Falcon, what are you doing? It's trial day. We have a someone to descend. Oh, god damn it. Okay guys. I think I messed up very badly. I don't have enough. I don't have enough to defend the guy. God damn it. Once again, Falcon and Sparrowson find themselves waiting outside the doors. Are you feeling nervous? Yeah, very. <sighs> what have we learned about Juan Prince Juan? Uh, what do we know about the real murderer? Nothing. Easy there, Falcon. We can do this. I don't think we can. Senor Falcon, I trust everything is in order? Absolutely, I have every intention of bringing the truth to light. Oh, such confidence. That's magnificent to see. And bringing the truth to light, you say. An admiral goal. No more jousting at imaginary giants. All of you. It's your jammering. The door's opening. Here we go. Buena suerte, señor Falcon. We will. Okay, guys. Whew. I'm nervous. There, There is the... The fella, JJ, Severin. Nervous? Why would I be nervous? I am not nervous. I am as calm as a cuckoo. You are the nervous one. This whole corridor is nervous. Well, cool your feather, Falcon. Terrible, terrible. You can't even maintain a stoic facade. I thought this trial would be the perfect opportunity for you to redeem your previous embarrassments. But if this is how you act before the trial has even started, why you pompous tail bust your perfect? Wait. The judge. It is him, right? Order, order. Let's all settle down. Court is now in session. Psst, Falcon. What is it? Is it me? Or does the primary judge look hairier today? That's a different judge. Oh, still, it's a little strange, isn't it? Yeah. Hmm. Excuse me, your honor. I was under the impression that Judge Maxim would be residing over this case. Where is he? Judge Maxim has gone on temporary sick leave due to a terrible accident with a flight of stairs. But rest assured, Monsieur, Prosecutor, Defense, and members of the jury, that I am more than qualified to fill his shoes. Without further ado, let's get this shot underway. This is the trial of Juan Querido, the Prince of Spain, who stands accused of murdering Major Howell and of conspiring to murder the king himself. Roll call. Defense is present and ready. Prosecution is ready. Good, very good. I expect this to be a nice speedy trial. I don't want to see this dragged out by technicalities and bureaucracy. Well said, your honor. I expect that once the court sees the overwhelming evidence, this trial will be over in five minutes. Five minutes? He's just messing with your head, Falcon. Keep it together. So, we're all on the same page? Excellent. Prosecutor, please call your first witness. Very well. I call the police officer who investigated the crime scene. I call upon Inspector 
Jus Valerti. Step out to the stun, Inspector. Same as before, huh? I sort to speak without hatred and without fear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Please recite your name and occupation. My name is Inspector Jus Valerti. I am a servant of the law, scotch of the gutter rats. That will do, Inspector. We've all he heard your monologue before. Whoa, Coco Rico really is going for a speed record, isn't he? Now, can you tell us what you witnessed? Of course. At 10 o'clock. Oh, I get it. O'clock. In the morning, I was called to the Louvre's Grand Gallery by one of the King's Royal Guards. Did he say o'clock? There I saw Prince Juan, King Louis Philippe, and the corpse of Mayor Howell with a rose in hand and around two dozen witnesses. The witnesses and the king himself all attest to seeing Mayor Howell taking the rose from Prince Juan's hand and then promptly dropping dead. And what did the more uncover upon examination of the corpse? The coroner determined with absolute certainty that Mayor Howell died of poisoning. Aside from a prick under the finger, there was no sign of external harm to his body. Therefore, the poison rose must have been the cause of death. Putting the pieces together, that does seem very implicative of the prince. I have no further questions. Damn. I was hoping that the coroner's report would determine that the guy died from a freak heart attack or something. That would make for a particularly speedy trial, wouldn't it? But nope. We are not so lucky. Something else be must be a miss in the old bird's testimony. Right. I'll tear it apart. Your honor, I wish to crack some in the, wis the witness. Falcon, wasn't it? Don't wait th waste the court's time. A high-ranking police officer would never lie. I wouldn't accuse Inspector of lying. I just want to make sure that every base is properly covered. Uh, this sounds a little uh, like pointless nitpicking to me, but I'll allow it. For now. Go on, Falcon. Do your cross-examination. Okay. The corpse of Mayor Hell with a rose in hand... Two dozen citizens determined that the mayor had died of poisoning. Okay, Inspector, you say that the coroner determined with certainty that Mayor Hall was killed by poison. Correct. He stated that the signs and symptoms were textbook. There is no possibility of his death was natural. How was he poisoned? What was the delivery mechanism? His finger was prickled by the poison rose. He even commented out loud about it seconds before dying. All 22 witnesses who witnessed the murder attested to seeing and hearing this. Is there any possibility that he was poisoned by something else? What an absurd thing to ask, AJ. You just heard that 22 people saw the victim prick his finger and die. Yeah, but you know post hoc ergo propter hoc? What are you suggesting? That the pricked finger had no relation to the poisoning? That's exactly what I'm saying. I don't doubt that Mayor Howell was poisoned, but I do doubt that the rose was the cause. Unbelievable. Only a total buffoon could fail to draw the blatant link here. JJ, as tempting as it is to sit here and lecture you on the basis of cause and effect, I'll end this discussion painlessly. Inspector, please tell the defense that you found traces of poison on the thorns of the rose itself. That should alleviate all doubt that the rose was, in fact, the poison deliver mechanism. Actually, I can't tell him that. I dread to ask, but why not? We didn't check the rose for traces of poison. It just seemed obvious that the rose caused the poisoning, given the timing of the incident. Well then. Now would be a good time to make a test. Here's a marvelous thought. We prick the finger of the defendant with the rose. If there is no poison on the, ro poison on the rose, then Prince Juan lives, and he is free to go. If the rose is poisoned, then the prince dies. But that's okay, because the punishment would be just and fitting for the crime. A marvelous suggestion, says Judge Romulus. 
What is this? A witch trial? This is an America, Severin. That's not how we do things here. Calm your feathers, JJ. It was clearly a joke. There are far more humane ways of testing for poison. I am sure the inspector will perform his duty with due diligence. Actually, uh, we won't be able to taste a rose. Why is that? Given the dangerous nature of the flower, it was destroyed by the police force. We burned it to ashes. Such unprofessionalism. Uh, if we have no way to know whether the rose was poisoned, then this whole trial ought to be called into question. Nice try, JJ, but through the process of reasoning by elimination, we can still deduce with absolute certainty that the rose was poisoned. In other words, there was nothing else at the crime scene that could have caused the poisoning. Wrong, there was something else at the crime scene that could have contained the poison, something the investigative police blindly overlooked. Chocolate. Look at this. What am I supposed to be looking at? This is paper rubber to a piece of chocolate. It was found in the Louvre and we can date its consumption to the day of the incident. You are not suggesting that Mayor Howe ate a piece of poisoned chocolate? I mo most certainly am. Oh, intriguing. Pretty convincing, they say. You gained a little favor with the jury. Good, guys. Guys, we're doing it. I think that I botched the, the interviews, but it's fine. Did you see this wrapper at the crime scene for yourself, Inspector? The police force does not have the time nor resources to troll every piece of trash at every crime scene, I am afraid. In other words, you overlooked it. Astounding unprofessionalism. The prosecution is right to be disgusted. What a disgraceful display, Inspector. I offer my apologies, Your Honor. I do not want your apologies. I want you to do your goddamn job properly. Get off the witness podium before I kick you off myself. As you wish. I'll take my leave. Until next time, messieurs. So, let me get this straight. This chocolate wrapper was found at the crime scene. Correct. And you have reason to believe that it was consumed on the day of the incident. I do. I have an expert food tasting witness who is willing to testify if need be. You have a foodie witness? I don't recall anyone like that. Who on earth are you talking about? Oh. Uh, but do you know for certain that Mayor Hall consumed this chocolate? Well, that is a fact that we're still investigating. I see. And do you have evidence that this chocolate was in fact poisoned? Nope. Again, that is something that may require a little more time to definitely prove. So then, in actuality, you do not have evidence that Mayor Hall consumed some poisoned chocolate. Instead, you have a solitary piece of rubbish that you pluck straight out of the gutter. That's weak, even for you, JJ. Damn. Let's move things along. I have another witness I would like to summon. He is a man who claims to have had an excellent view of the people going in and out of the Louvre at the time of the incident. I call upon Monsieur Toussaint Kingley. Could the witness please approach the stand? Oh, bro. I miss this guy. I didn't interview this guy. Who is this? Hello, 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 he says. Hello. Alright, the oath. I thought to speak without hatred and without fear and tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Uh, please state your full name and occupation. My name is Toussaint Kingley and I am a person who fishes. A person who fishes? So you're a fisherman? Oh, oh. Is that how it is? I thought the French justice system was better than this. I beg your pardon? Here comes Toussaint Kingley, the kingfisher. Clearly he must be a fisherman because didn't you see? All kingfishers are fishermen. Oh, he thinks he's been discriminated against. Mm. You're carrying a fishing rod. And, and, and? Can a man not carry a fishing rod, reel and bait without being branded a fisherman? Look, look. The prosecutor is carrying a riding crop. Clearly he must be a horse jockey. 
<sighs> For pity's sake, fine, fine, we can list your occupation as person who fishes and not fisherman. Thank you. Actually, why do you carry a riding crop, Severin? I've never seen you ride a horse. I don't know, JJ. Why do you, a 30-something year old with no health problems, carry a cane? This is very quiet, far off the course. Could the prosecution please go back to his questions? Of course, Your Honor. Monsieur Kingley, is it true that you were nearby the Louvre at the time of the incident? Yes, I was sitting upon the railing of the Pont du Art. Where is that? Uh, here. Uh, that's the new bridge that's just a stone thrown from the Louvre's south entrance, correct? That's right. <coughs> And what were you doing at the time of the incident? I was fishing. Pfft, kingfishers, am I right, Falcon? Cut them. So you will have had plenty of opportunity to see the people who entered and exited the palace. Uh, can you tell us who you saw? Well, the Louvre's busy place, busy palace. Naturally, I saw a lot of people. But at 9 a.m. I saw the king, Louis Philippe himself entered the building. He was surrounded by his entourage, of course. Then, around 9.30, I saw this shifty looking fox lurking around the entrance. Your Honor, I object to the witness's term, use of the term shifty looking. It's a vague and biased description. No, really. He looked very shifty. I saw him rubbing his paws and clacking gleefully. And then I saw him take out a rose and carefully rub the stem. Rub the stems of a rose, you see? Uh, as if he were applying something to the flower, perhaps? Well, monsieur, I really shouldn't speculate. Of course. It was wrong of me to ask such a leading question. But yeah, it definitely looked like he was putting some sort of powder on the stem. Whoa, even I wasn't expecting such a bold admission. Members of the court, it sounds like what we have here is a direct witnessing of the defendant reading the murder weapon. The defense claims that the rose was never poisoned and yet, here we have a man who saw the poison with his own eyes. I smell perjury! You do? No question. He saw the shifty looking criminal reading poison and calculating near the scene of the crime? That's not believable at all! I think you might be right. I wonder if I have any evidence that calls Tosan's story into doubt. Your Honor, I would like to cross-examine the witness. Really? This nonsense again? You just heard the witness directly describe your client red in poison on a rose. What is there to question? I'm just trying to uncover the truth, Your Honor. Ah, fine. Do your thing. Go on. Make a fool out of yourself, says the judge. Powder, shift looking fox. Uh, Pont de Sartes. Monsieur Kingley, you say you were sitting upon the railings of the Pont de Sartes on the morning. Yep. Uh, what entrances can you see from that bridge? Yup, the Pont de is a great vantage point for seeing the Grand Gallery's south side. What about other entrances? The other entrances? You mean like if you were entering from the Tuileries Gardens? No, I couldn't possibly see those areas from the bridge. But of course that isn't relevant. Monsieur Kingly witnessed Prince Juan entering the south entrance with flower in hand. What if Prince Juan used another entrance? What if he approached the Louvre from the Tuileries Gardens to the west? That's a big what if. Do you have any evidence that Prince Juan entered the Louvre from that place? As a matter of fact, yes, I do. I have definite proof that Prince Juan approached from the west. Hey, I know what I saw, Monsieur. I am doubtful too. Go on, JJ. Show us this definite proof. 
the page of the book, bro. Look at this. A book page? Page 44 of Don Quixote, specifically. It was found outside the Louvre's entrance. This proves nothing. I'm not done yet. Look at this. Don Quixote. This is the book Prince Juan had had been reading in jail since his arrest. I believe he has had it on his person for some time. And ye yes, page 44 is missing. That was the first thing I checked. Do you realize what this means, Don you, Severin? The defendant was present in the gardens prior to entering the Louvre. This also means that in all likelihood, the defendant entered the Louvre from the west entrance, not the south. He could not possibly have been seen but Monsieur Kingley from the Pont du Sart. What? I know what I saw, Monsieur. A fine theory, but maybe the defendant took the long way around? Hmm. One can still travel from the Tuileries to the Louvre South entrance by walking along the river. An extra two kilometers of walking just to enjoy the pre-murder scenery? It's not... Let's not say silly things, Cocorico. Okay, maybe the defendant deliberately left the page there to mislead the investigation. Not you are the ones who's blindly speculating. It's not blind speculation, it's a viable hypothesis. You are fond of logic, aren't you, Cocorico? Let's talk about Occam's Razor. When torn between two seemingly equal hypotheses, we must side with the one that imposes the fewest assumptions. Which of these theories takes fewer assumptions? One, the page from the book fell out of his way to the Louvre's south entrance. Two, Prince Juan deliberately planted the page uh, on the off chance that it would be discovered and then he took the long way around. How dare you? The nerve of you to lecture me on such basic philosophical concept. I'll stop lecturing you when you stop making such basic mistakes. Monsieur Falcon, please calm yourself. What is the point of all this jammering, says the Judge Romulus? The ultimate point is that Toussaint's testimony is fabricated, made up, utter fiction. Ah, no, everything I've said is the truth. I suspect that the witness isn't even a fisherman. I'm not a fisherman, says Toussaint. See, he admit admits it himself, goddamn. <laughs> Falcon is so good. That's not what I meant. Oh, innocent perhaps. What a twist. You gain a little favor with the jury. Guys, we're doing it. Prosecutor, you have something with, uh, that will put this arrogant Falcon in his place, don't you? I must concede. You concede? On this point at least, Falcon's evidence strongly suggests that the key component on Monsieur Kingley's testimony is false. Oh, no. This doesn't mean that Juan is innocent, of course. All Falcon has demonstrated and is that this particular witness is unreliable. But I did see something. I really did. Alright, so maybe I didn't exactly see a shifty-looking fox. I made that part of the story up. But I did see a swan lurking around the south entrance on the morning of the murder. A swan. A swan? Do shut up, witness. Your word is mud at this point. How can we possibly trust anything you have to say? Uh, Your Honor? Judge Romulus, we're out of time. We are 10 minutes overdue to start on the Hare vs. Tortoise trial. Uh, is that late already? Curses. I was hoping we could have this case wrapped up in a single trial session. It is a shame, but ultimately, an accurate sentencing is always preferable to a speedy sentencing. Okay, so this guy is an upstanding bro. Like, I had it as a shifty dude that just wanted to win, but he seems to be like a, you know, uh, honorable. Yeah, alright. I don't need to hear your moralizing. Court will resume this Friday, the 21st of January at 9 o'clock. Don't be late. Prosecutor, do your damn job. Get this stupid fox a conviction already. I will do my best to ensure that justice is served, Your Honor. 
Oh, that guy's gonna die, isn't it? A lot came up in the trial, huh? Yup, no doubt about that. But something's bothering me. Why would that fisherman guy, Monsieur Kingley, lie on the witness stand? Uh. Mm. Maybe he was coerced. It's possible that he was bribed? That's what I was thinking. Maybe the real murderer threatened the fisherman into making up a story about Prince Juan. Let's keep an open mind. Anything is possible at this stage. But to be perfectly honest, something else is bothering me about the trial. The judge, yeah. He's acting without a shred of professionalism. He's obviously more interested in securing a guilty verdict than he is in discovering the truth. But why? Maybe he has a vendetta against Spanish royalty. I am not so sure. There must be something else at work here. Excuse me? Excuse me, Monsieur Falcon. Oh, it's this bro. Sorry to bother you, but this letter just arrived. I think it's for you. A letter? I wonder why it wasn't sent to my office. Have you been demoted to courtier status, Robert? Hush, hush, Sparrowson. I don't need to be pitied by the first year dropout. Good comeback. Uh, so what does the letter say, Falcon? It's a threat. A threat made with cut out newspaper letters. Whoa. I didn't know those things already actually existed. Let me see. Falcon. Stop your investigation and there will be or there will be consequences. Scary. There is no question that this letter originated from Mayor Hall's murderer. He or she must be aware that we're getting close to uncovering the truth. Sounds about right, but why would a person write with cut out newspaper letters like this? Masking one's handwriting must be the most common reason. Although I can help but wonder why they would bother since we don't have any handwriting samples to compare it to. We are still going ahead on the, with our investigation through, though, right? Yes. Absolutely. If a lawyer were deterred every time he received threatening letters, they would never get any work done. Besides, with only three days before the next trial, we can afford to be worrying about petty things like this. Tuesday. Wednesday, Thursday. Whoa, you're right. Let's make those days count. And we shall, guys. We shall make them count. But for now, I'm gonna say goodbye. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe, leave a comment, and let me know what you think. So, see you next time. Bye-bye.